while I'll be using a game known as Star Citizen for my Track IR tutorial, this tutorial will still apply to absolutely any game you play with Track IR. And for my Star Citizen players, I'll have some specific settings at the end of this in the game itself that correlate to Track IR. Track IR allows you to move your camera around in the game via head movement. It allows for pitch, yaw, roll, X, Y, and Z. Let's cover the interface. First off, depending on what Track IR you get, you have the option of selecting Track Clip and Track Clip Pro. Mind you, while Track IR does sell Track Clip Pro, there are alternatives that work with Track IR. Basically, it's just three infrared dots, and as long as they're aligned as the software likes, it will function. For example, I use the Loop Clip since I wanted a wireless solution for me while still having the accuracy that Track IR provides. Next, we'll look at motion controls. In motion control, we have speed, which basically accelerates or decelerates whatever configuration rate you have. Then we have smoothing. Smoothing is just how it sounds. It smooths your input. Playing with max smoothness would give you the most smooth control, however it comes with the cost of increasing latency. Ideally you would want to play with zero smoothing, which will make it very fast and responsive, but it would cause your game to be very jittery since it's calculating absolutely every single movement you make. I like to play around 10 or 15 smoothing, but whenever I feel like doing some cinematic work, I'll actually bump my smoothing to max so I can get smoother camera pans. And mind you, you can also make your inputs much smoother by fine tuning your settings to have a smooth curvature. We'll touch a little bit on this later, but for now, let's get into the profiles. So off the bat in profiles, you have your defaults that come with the program. We're gonna go ahead and create one, and I'm gonna name mine Star Citizen since that's what we'll be playing today. However, you can do this for DCS or any other game that supports Track IR. Now, I already have my profile set, so let's just go into how I like to set up my Track IR for my games. Okay, so we're here in Star Citizen, and just to make this a little bit easier to visualize and understand, we're gonna go ahead and show you a live demonstration. So in uh, our track IR program, there's this red line that pops up here as long on the graph as long as I move around. Um, I'm gonna show this up close so it's easier to understand. But basically that's where your head is rotating in real life. So what we're gonna do is first set a dead zone. This first notch that we grab, we wanna have this where we want it to not indicate our head movement at all. So if you see if I extend it all the way out, you'll see that the degrees don't move if I move my head till I get to a certain range. It's a dead zone, just like on a joystick. So I put a tiny, tiny bit just so that there's no jitter when I do like this, like I'm moving my head, but you see the ship isn't moving much. That's what it's for. The next thing we're gonna go into this main guy. This is our main thing. I like linear, so I use this as my main tool. We're gonna set a down low just to give you an example. So say I'm down low, if I look to the right, you see how I only see 40 degrees, 45 degrees now, and that's what correlates here. So what I like to do is I move my head to a position where I like my max to be, meaning I never wanna have to move my head more than this way. Now all I do while holding this notch is adjust it up till eventually we get to this lock zone where you see in Star Citizen there's absolutely no movement. Uh, in Track R it's about 135 degrees. So max head position, adjust till 135, and now boom, I have my max set. So now when we go in Star Citizen, I hit my max, I'm already looking behind me. And you would do this for all the axes for all the axis, axes, whatever it is, um, to have it positioned where you like it, where it feels snappy to you, and um, you know, it doesn't require you turning your head 180 degrees. Now that you understand how to set it up, let's talk a little bit about curvatures. So in the example where I set my track IR, it's a very linear curve. This means that the inputs are always one-to-one, -one, which makes it very responsive. That said, it could be a little bit difficult to do some fine movement control. So let's look at a smooth profile. By default, track IR should come with this, so you don't have to create one, and this will give you an idea. But in essence, what you'll see in correlation is that usually it has a bit of a ramp up curvature. For example, if I wanted to have really fine control in minimum movement, I would want to adjust my curves a little bit like this. And then at the outer reaches, I could have it drastically increase in speed by setting the final curves to something like this. This is not ideal in gaming, but it can be very useful for cinematography. Make sure to set a hotkey for your profile. This is basically the hotkey that you can quickly tap to recenter your track IR. Let's talk about your motion adjustments. As covered in the beginning of the video, track IR allows you to look at your yaw, pitch, roll, X, Y, and Z. These boxes allow you to disable certain aspects of the track IR. For example, for most games, you'll always want yaw and pitch. I have never been a fan of roll on any game, though it might be nice for cinematography. 
and X, Y, and Z are up to you. I personally find them distracting in Star Citizen when it comes to combat, but it is a must use for cinematography. Though if you're playing something more aviation based like DCS or racing, I think these are great to leave on. TrueView is a must use and it's what separates Track RR from using other motion controls such as OpenTrack or FaceTrack. Though I'm sure those programs have gotten better, I find that nothing compares to Track RR. What TrueView does is when you look behind you, it flips the axes to function in a mirror format in the software. This allows it to feel natural while looking behind you. You can test this for yourself by enabling and disabling this in game. It really takes a feel for you to really understand it. Now for those of you that do play Star Citizen like myself, let's look at the in-game settings. For head tracking general source, just make sure that track R is selected. Head tracking general toggle enabled is going to be yes. That just turns on our track IR. However, there's a hotkey for this in key bindings, what we'll cover in a second. Finally, we have use position offsets in cockpits, and if you set this to no, it disables X, Y, and Z. However, X, Y, and Z will still work in external camera views. Now let's move to key bindings. Make sure to select your desired controller on the bottom right, then enter advanced control customization, navigate to VoIP, VoIP, and head tracking. On here, we have enable head tracking, which allows us to turn on and off our head tracking. And secondly, we have enable disable head tracking for third person camera, which does as the latter, just for external cameras. Hope this was helpful, and if you're new to my channel and play Star Citizen, make sure to check out the rest of my channel as I've dedicated myself to teaching others on learning more about how to play Star Citizen and how to become better at piloting. That's going to be it for this one, and I'll catch you on the next one.